Hey guys, Tomboy601, and today we have a review on the brand new Tier 5 Italian cruiser, Duca d'Aosta, or if you want to say the ship's full name, it's the Emmanuel Filberto Duca d'Aosta. Yeah, I didn't understand why uh, Emmanuel Filberto is the largest name on the back of the ship, but it turns out it's a big old long name of a ship, but they only wanted to put the last two names. Anyways, I have to thank Wargaming for force providing the ship. I am in the community contributor program, and as such, they have provided the ship for review. So in a roundabout way, this video is sponsored by Wargaming because they are giving me this ship to produce content with. Let's go ahead and do comment of the day, and then we'll get into the review of this ship. Today's comment of the day goes out to... Omar Ali Adele, he says, Hey, Tom, I really enjoyed the last Mythbuster video, and I was hoping you could do another one. I have a myth right here, and that is, what would happen if you rammed a Campbelltown into another Campbelltown? Like, who would die first? And, uh, well, first off, they'd probably die at the same time because they have the exact same HP pools, unless they were using a certain commander that reduces uh, ramming damage and increases ramming damage, but they both use that commander, then they would still equal out. Anyways... He's, of course, referring to our April Fool's video. If you haven't seen that video, go and check it out. It's a pretty funny one, and uh, there's special merch for it. So go check that out as well. Merch shop link down below. Enough of the self-plugs. Let's get into the Duca de Osta. This ship right here, it's an interesting one. Um, it, it It's the worst at the tier at a lot of things. And it's an Italian cruiser that doesn't have smoke. So you can imagine just the kind of special sauce that is included with it. Let's go ahead and talk stats. So hit points, you're looking at 29,700 hit points with a minimum armor thickness of seven millimeters and a maximum of 100 with a 7% torpedo reduction. We'll go ahead and take a look at the armor view. As we can see in the front, we are looking at 16 inch plating, which is just inviting HE and AP to head straight on through. We'll go ahead and get rid of that. Then we can start kind of see the Citadel structure. One nice thing is that torpedo belt, that armor protection right at the uh, bottom right there. 70 inches of armor on that torpedo belt, giving us, uh, I believe it's a 7% reduction in torpedo damage. Get rid of that. And unfortunately, now you're starting to see the Citadel. And at first I was like, oh, it's not too bad. The torpedo belt is providing protection. No, it's, it's bad. There it is. There's the good old Citadel. As we can see, not the worst as far as sticking straight out of the water. Like, it is it is not the worst. It's still out of the water, and there's still not much above it. Like, if we reapply uh, this as far as, like, protection from plunging shots, not really there. Uh, so, this is going to be a ship where if a battleship decides to sneeze at you and you take the hit, you're taking the hit, if you know what I mean. And with all of that said, let's go ahead and now move on to the main battery. It has four two-barrel turrets with 152 millimeter guns. Firing range on them shortest at the tier 14.1 kilometers with a somewhat fast reload time of 7.5 seconds. Shells per minute with that would bring it to 34, which is fairly low in middle of the tier. 180 time on those turrets, 25.7 seconds, slowest at the tier, even slower than the Graf Spree, which is impressive because those are uh, battleship guns and somehow this thing has slower turret traverse than battleship guns. Yeah. Anyways, moving on <laughs> to continue. HE low set the tier as well. 2100 damage with a damage per minute of 71,400 with a small 7% chance of fire. AP damage 3200, also lowest at the tier and a damage per minute of 108,800. Once again, also lowest damage per tier. You're kind of picking up a, a, a theme here. It's not exactly a barn burner of a ship. Secondaries has three two-barreled 100 millimeter secondaries with a range of 4.5 kilometers and a reload time of six seconds doing 1500 damage with a 6% chance of fire. Torpedoes, it essentially mimics the Trento's torpedoes, two three-barrel torpedoes with a reload time of 71 seconds. Damage lowest of any uh, torpedo at the tier 13,367. Tor detectability range really great at only one kilometer, but the speed is slow, 51 knots, but that is made up for with its ex excellent range at 12 kilometers. Max speed of the ship, 36.5 knots with a turning radius of 710 meters. 
and a rudder shift time of 6.7. Not quite the most maneuverable ship you've ever seen, but it does do a decent job. And here comes the ship's strengths, and that's going to be its detectability by sea, uh, and it's just concealment overall. It is the stealthiest cruiser at the tier, 9.9 uh, .9 kilometers uh, by sea, 6.2 by air, and 4.7 while firing in smoke. But we'll get to this later, it doesn't have a smoke screen, so that stat really isn't much of a help here. Let's next go ahead and talk about commanders, uh, mods, and the consumables. The commander that I am running for this is Campioni. I think you could also easily make the argument to run Mibelli with all of the survival and ingenious, though I found Campioni to be just the most fun. Uh, his base stat is to reduce the incoming damage to your ship. The inspirations I have on him are Makawa to uh, bring down the detectability on the ship and then Lutkins just to help with the AP damage because that is the most lethal part of the ship is its AP damage. Uh, so just trying to boost it up so it's a little bit more competitive. Then as far as the rest of the skills go, I have Burn It Down XXL, which is increasing the chance of HE damage. Then Look At Me Now, which is in, uh, decreasing the detectability range. Then uh, uh, vol Volicious, vol Velocious, the one that makes you go faster. Then I have reaching out XSL just to increase the the firing range because it does have a fairly short firing range for a cruiser. And then finally, I went with will to rebuild just because it has that, has that added utility. A lot of the times I would go fully packed, but you already get a fairly large number of the consumables. Uh, so I don't feel like you really need to add additional ones with uh, fully packed just because of what you do have. It's not ones that you are going to easily burn through in a full match. And speaking of the consumables, let's go over them now. Of course, you have that damage control party. Uh, duration is five seconds with a reload time of 60 seconds. Nothing too special there. Sonar, you're looking at uh, 2.8 kilometer detection on torpedoes and four kilometer detection on ships. It's going to last you 92 seconds, and it has a reload time of 180 seconds, and you get two charges of that. And finally, Catapult Fighter, you have it up time for 100 seconds. Reload time is 80 seconds, and you have three Catapult Fighters, which, uh, you know, it, that, that does certainly help and play a role. Finally, I'll go ahead and talk the mods. For the first mod slot, I went ahead and used Aiming Systems Mod 1. It, that's what you're going to want to do. You could, I could see you making an argument for main battery traverse speed, but I, I don't think with, even with how, how low and slow the, the battery traverse speed is, I think aiming system mod one just gives you so much, uh, more, uh, benefits, uh, especially within the dispersion and you'll need, you'll want as, as little dispersion on the ship as possible to be as accurate as possible. And that's why I went with uh, mod one. And then for the second mod slot, I went with steering gears just to try to add to being able to dodge, being a little bit more agile with this ship uh, because you can't take hits. Like you, you are a sponge and you need to avoid fire if you can. So with all of those changes, let's go ahead and talk about the final build stats for at least this build. Artillery, we've gone ahead and increased the main battery range to 14.4 kilometers. Maneuverability, we've buffed. Max speed is now up to 37.2 knots, and the rudder shift time is down to 5.3 seconds. And finally, our detectability by sea is down to 9.1 kilometers, meaning we have a stealthy fast ship that has a decent range for the tier. Um, additionally, we did also buff that AP damage. It is now up to 3,296. With the stats out of the way, let's go and talk the history and then we'll get into a game with the Deosta. So the, the Italian uh, entry into the war of the Deosta was part of the second cruiser squadron and participated in the battle of Punta Stilo between the 6th and 10th of July. In addition, she put, protected North African convoys and took place in fleet sorties against the British cruisers and bombard at Corfu on the 18th of December. During 1941, Deosta served mostly with the 8th Cruiser Division, laying minefields off North Africa and protecting convoys. Um, she later in December led in the first Battle of Sirte, in which Acosta took part. 
Her duties in 1942 were much like before, but with aggressive actions against alloyed, allied convoys, including in Operations Harpoon and Vigorous. In June, um, she also uh, tried to interrupt the British control and supplies to Malta. She sailed in August against the critical pedestal convoy, but uh, being without air cover, she kind of gave up in those sorties. On July 13th, 1942, she and uh, the Monte were attacked by the British submarine HMS Unison, but she did the Unison did not land a hit. Uh, by 1943, the ship went inactive because of fuel shortages, and she's considered to be a lucky ship because she never took a hit in battle. Like the closest she got to was that tor was the torpedo attack from the British submarine, but she did end up avoiding it. And beyond that, that's all the history she really has to offer. So it's not much of a, a legendary or uh, a storied ship to, per se. It's just a ship that kind of got added to this game. So with all that, let's go ahead and dive on into a game. So here we are on the map Triton and we, or Triton, and we are gonna go ahead and farm off to the far side. You know, uh, we're gonna try to win our side, play our side, and for us, that means we need to be sort of a support cruiser. We do have the ability to get close, and if we didn't have a destroyer on our side, this is when we would go ahead and use our concealment to our advantage take the moment and see when we want to take our shot. Emerald pops up, so we're gonna go ahead and let him know that we see him. He's already popping smoke, but we do have very accurate guns. That is one of the big advantages to the the Italian right, line overall is their somewhat accurate guns. And you can just see that right there. 7K from a salvo. We're already at 10K total damage for this game. And we are just laying into him and we get a dev strike first blood right there. 24K gone from the Emerald. And now Congo is getting our attention. Smoke has been popped, so we know that uh, someone is on the way. And then we get the dreaded uh, console. The batteries are low. So we go ahead. We're going to try to get behind this island. And once we do, once we're unspotted, try and go ahead and replace the uh, controller batteries before we blow up. Because we learned our lesson from the last time when it got us killed. Uh, I forget what video that was, but we did definitely die. So we popped, up, popped out the batteries, got them ready. We're back in and we're good to go. Iron Duke out in the distance, and that enemy battleship looks like he's gonna be cresting around that corner, and it is time to take advantage of what I think are one of the Deosta's like secret weapons, the torpedoes. So she does have very long range, very slow torpedoes, and you may say that's a very bad thing, but what that lets you do is set up these torpedo traps where you fire them and you forget them, and you just let them go straight, and if someone chooses, to go ahead and keep sailing on their straight line. Well, you are going to go ahead and punish them for, for it. Isokaze pops out and he is going to stick to the in, to the close side to us of the island. Uh, we're going to go ahead and fire. And then Lagosanier is really going to be our priority. We're going to have to kind of dance between these, but he's low on health. He's going to do more damage overall. Uh, Isokaze, he's more there for the torpedo threat. Take out Lagosanier. So we remove that damage per minute threat from the battlefield. And now we're going to go ahead and concentrate on the destroyer because he is now spotted out alone and he won't become unspotted for us. And he, and we're going to go ahead and try to dodge these torps. He gets taken out and we are safe on our way. 56,000 damage and those torpedoes hit. I, I forgot to mention that those torpedoes ended up hitting, doing a decent amount of damage to that battleship. And it is now our time to kind of start dancing out in this backfield. Watch for when the Iron Duke fires. Try to get some damage done on the Iron Duke and the Congo. Fire, go ahead, fire our next set of torpedoes on the Congo. See if he uh, learns his lesson from the last time. Because, uh, you know, he, he took a, a pretty decent hit and is currently flooding because of our previous torpedoes. And uh, that's, that's the kind of thing we like to see. Or, or I guess maybe he got that flood under control but we are doing some decent damage, some damage over time. Go ahead and concentrate on the Congo just because he is lower health. Uh, pop pop, and switch between HE and AP. AP on the ship, very strong, very powerful. Uh, of course, it's not like the most powerful at the tier, but if you're between two options, you're gonna go with the AP. Whenever you use the Italian ships, just remember to go ahead and use the AP because the HE, not exactly the greatest. Anyways, we go ahead and hit the... Uh, Hit the Congo with the torpedo and we get a fire. 
and it should be pretty permanent because it doesn't look like he's deciding to put it out uh get a second fire lit and that is going to be the nail in that gentleman's coffin three kills down iron do our next priority it looks like the, those torpedoes are gonna go ahead and hit him and it actually ends up being that he gets a nice dodge in so he is going to be our next target and look at this we currently have the concealment where he cannot shoot us but we can shoot him which is nice we probably should have held our guns for a little bit longer but uh you know we live and we learn and uh he's definitely going to go ahead and take this opportunity to try to hit the broadside cruiser and thankfully we kind of get out of here just in the nick of time because those shells could have really really hurt us anyways at this point we've essentially won this side um our destroyer is firing out those torpedoes and those are probably going to go ahead and uh sink the iron duke We've successfully won our side. There's only uh, two other ships remaining after this Iron Duke goes down, and uh, we are two ships away from a Kraken. So we know it is time to try those ships all the way on the other end, and we're going to go ahead and use the Deosta's speed advantage to get over to the other side of the of the map because that is one of the strong suits. Overall, while we, while we do this transport, uh, I'll give my thoughts on this ship. I wouldn't buy it. Um... It, it is not the, it is, it's an Italian cruiser without smoke. And I think that is one of the utilities that Italian cruisers get. And it just doesn't have it. It's, it's a tier five Abruzzi uh, is what a lot of people have been saying. And given that it performs very much to what I feel like that one performs, I'm going to say, yeah, if you have the Abruzzi and you like it, I would say, pick this up. If not, um, I would kind of steer clear. It, it's a rough ship to learn. It's definitely interesting, like the fact that you can get the concealment down to a, a decent level. There, There is some fun to be had with this ship, but I would not think like this This would not be my first pick for a premium ship to take out. Um, I think the armor is just too weak. The guns are are decent as far as accuracy goes. Um, that, that is the one nice thing is it does have decent firing range, decent firing angles. You are going to take people out. Uh, at longer ranges, but you do need to be a very smart player when playing in the ship. Uh, because if you're not being smart about how you're playing, you are going to, uh, you're going to struggle real hard because it is, it is a tough ship to learn. It, um, doesn't have the armor to stack up against a lot of other ships and it doesn't have the utility to get itself out of situations. Its utility is its concealment. Its utility is its speed. Um, which are more high level and advanced things to be uh, proficient in. And I just don't think that this will lead to being many captains favorite ships, but it will be some. Um, the rudder shift time isn't amazing even when you try to spec into it. So it's also not going to be a really kiting kind of cruiser. It is very much a scouting rapid response slash, uh, playing the outfield kind of cruiser. It's very odd, and um, I just don't know if I would fully recommend it. Anyways, Mayhan pops up, and we're going to do our best to finish out this Kraken. If we can go ahead and nab him, we'll get ourselves a Kraken for the game, and we can always call that a, a good game when we can land a Kraken. And of course, remember how I mentioned how accurate these guns were? Of course, you're going to see us just miss all of these shots. And uh, Mayhan pop and smoke just to try to survive that little bit longer where we're just kind of missing them torpedoes coming in towards the mayhem all sorts of shells come in um we get the inca incapacitation and our teammates end up taking the the kill but hey it's a good game it's a good win if you guys like this video go ahead and hit the like button hit the subscribe button and i hope you guys have a great rest of your day see ya